Hello and welcome to Fluke Fridays. This is episode number 34 and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than normal. What we're going to be doing is I actually got somebody on the phone from Fluke, um, technical support guy from Fluke named Jim, and he's going to walk through with us how you would maybe first, after you get a power quality logger, what are you going to do next? Uh, what program are you, you going to use? How are you going to make reports? How are you going to look at the data? We're going to talk through all of that and he really is the expert. So I hope you guys enjoy this time and it's something different. If this is something, you know, kind of bringing in an expert is something you guys enjoy, leave it in the comments below and we'll do it again. So Jim, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today. And, um, yeah, I look forward to the conversation. So yeah, thanks for having me, Brandon. That's great. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, you know, we've got people out there that they get a fluke logger from fluke, whether it be a 17, 32, 34, 30, 6 or 38, all the even numbers, 30 series or the 1740 series or the 1770 series and get all excited about it. They get it to their facility and what do they want to do? They want to log and then they want to make a report or they want to see the data. So we kind of have some videos already on the channel about how you open up the device, how you get it going, how you do a logging session, how you get it off onto a USB stick. But kind of after that, what, what do they do when they get to the office and they're ready to look at the data? What would, what would you say the first thing they should do is? Yeah, okay. So as you mentioned, there's, there's basically three ways to get the data um, from the meter to your computer into the, um, this appropriate software called Energy Analyze Plus. So the easiest one, I would say, is just using a regular USB stick. Um, there's a USB port on the top of the instrument. So when you plug the thumb drive USB stick, and then once you uh, do that, the data will be on the thumb drive and you can re remove the USB uh, stick and bring it back to your computer. Now the data that will be on the USB stick um, will be in a format called, it, called a .fel file. That's raw data. The software program hasn't had a chance to convert it into the uh, Energy Analyze Plus software, which would be called a .fca file. Um, so from here, so, um, if we want to do a simulation, we can continue. But yeah, yeah. go ahead, Brandon. So uh, what I what I heard was the first thing you do when you get to a computer, you really need to download this Fluke Energy Analyze. And I think it's called Fluke Energy Analyze Plus. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And where you could get that is you could go to the Fluke website, download software updates. And then you can search for it, um, or you can find your tool, I think, down here. But if we just search uh, energy, then right here, Fluke Energy Analyze Plus, and the latest version at this recording is a uh, version 3.8. So you download that, you'd have to have admin rights and, and get that going. Um, so once we do that, next step is what, Jim, to open it? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, so if you plug the thumb drive into your uh, computer, then you would go under your file explorer. Okay, that's what we have here. Okay, so you see um, in Brandon's example here, they, these are all raw files. They've not been opened yet in the software program. So, you, so yeah. that what? Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and do that again, Brandon. Do it a little bit slower. So, so on. Yeah, we'll go back. Um, if you're in your your main file explorer, you'll go down and find your USB stick, um, click that, and then depending on what unit you downloaded from, you'll click that. And, that's, then, and that number right there that you just showed, that's the serial number of the instrument, that 32. Okay. Yeah, that's the serial number of the meter, so you open that. Okay. And then, and then you have sessions or, or screenshots. Session. So, the yeah. di so the difference between those two screenshots are just pictures that the uh, meter would allow you to save a screenshot, just like you would bring out your phone and take a picture. Yeah. So it, it's in a, a. Okay, so it's, know, a, just regular, it's a regular photo. Just Here we go. Photo. There's a screenshot, right? Yeah. And, okay. Uh, and then, uh, but, but we want to do a session. Yeah, because that's where the raw data is at the, as you see the .fel files. And, and Brandon, you have a number of them there. So you pick the one that you want to open. Okay. There's no wrong or right. And it will then launch the um, the software program. Just say okay. Yep. And, and so, because it's a, a .fel file, raw data, the software program wants to convert it. 
So that's why it's asking you to save it. Okay. Seems kind of odd, but that's the reason for it. Uh, you could put it anywhere on your PC, right? Anywhere you want. That's okay. right. Okay. So that that's what we'll do. I'm going to change this to just test uh, and hit save. Yep. And then uh, so the the program will open all the files every single time in the default, which is called the project manager. It's up in the top left-hand corner of the program. Yep, I see it. It's tab, so the black one is the one that's highlighted. And uh, one, I mean, in tech support, what the common thing is, a person will be here and they'll go, I want to create a report. So they're going to look for some sort of report situation. Then then Brandon's highlighting it. And uh, if you click on that, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah. It'll, it, depending on the meter, so that, this is where the problem is, as far as I'm concerned, for tech support is that not all instruments have that EN5160.2010 um, built into it, like the 1732 doesn't, the 1734 doesn't, the 1736 does, and the 1738 does. Okay. So if you want to, so if you want to create a report with the EN5160, then that would be fine. But it's a pre-configured report. You don't have any control over it. Okay. As so a, I can't those, choose what I want in the report if no. I click that. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so if I have a device that doesn't have that activated, it doesn't even give me an option. It won't. And it okay. confuses customers like, why can't I get this and so on and so forth. So normally I don't um, pick this capability because – most of the customers I talk to don't know what EN5160 is, and they want to just do um, a report that shows voltage and amperage only. That's what their purpose is. And, okay. And, and, and or whatever you want. So um, word of caution, don't click this report button. We will get to the report here in a little bit, but don't click this one is what Jim's saying. Right. That's right. That's so right. I want to see the data. What Where do I click these tabs or where or two? Yeah, that's right. So to the right of the project manager, energy study will be uh, where most people will um, will land. And uh, underneath, now that Brandon has clicked that, you'll see that there's uh, five, six categories underneath that from left to right. The, um, the one in yellow. So under the project manager, you can see, yeah, right there. So RMS power is in gold. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at an RMS power. In this case, it's uh, watts, total watts. Um, but most customers in the beginning will go over to the VAHZTHD choice, which is to the right, Brandon. You have demand, calendar view, fundamental power. Yeah, click there. So here, you're going to have the um, ability to... Um, create graphs that are of your choosing. What do you want to evaluate? Okay. Um, so right now we're looking at a voltage for Volt. the A phase. A phase. Okay. Got it. Yeah. If I wanted uh, to look at current on A phase, I just click that. doesn't really right. show or tell me much to my brain, but I see how you at least add it. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Uh, so the common thing would be people don't know what they want to create because they haven't talked to the end user, the client that they're creating the report for. So they'll want me to tell them what they want in the report. And of course I don't know, um, but just doing this a number of years, there's kind of a, a normal pattern that um, the end client would want. Okay. Uh, so some clients like the data overlapping each other. So right now we're just looking at one phase uh -huh. And so, Brandon, if you click on another uh, channel over there, so these colors are defaults, but you can modify them to what you want. So okay. right now, A is black, uh, B is red, and C is blue. Got it. Oh, fine. Um, so personally, I like to have the phases separated because it's cleaner. Um, so the 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 next the so next just step, one of these i just like to show just one okay and then the other piece is that those two vertical black lines uh there um on the graph uh those are called cursors and and they're fine um if you wanted to um move it to a place on the recording where you'd want to know a date and a time stamp and what the amplitude is yep. and uh, to the right of the graph you see the the highlighted yellow area gives you 
um, cursor one, cursor two, and then uh, delta, meaning in between the cursor, what's the time difference and what's the amplitude difference? Got it. Um, but going back to what I said, normally people don't care about that at this point for the report. So okay. I turn them, I turn them off. I turn the cursors off. And where do we so do that, that, Jim? So yeah, go ahead and put your uh, mouse on the graph and then do a right mouse click. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, not on the actual data. And then select hide cursor. Okay, there we go. Um, the secondary thing is that people would like to know um, what when the maximum amplitude was, like what's the highest voltage and what is the lowest voltage. So to do that, you can do what you stumbled across, Brandon, and just put your mouse either on the data line and do a right, and that's a little harder. Um, yeah, so let's let's skip that. Um, down in the bottom left-hand corner of the graph, uh, Yes, down there. So put your mouse on the number one, and your arrow should turn uh, the one below that. Uh, Oops, sorry. I just yeah. did something crazy. Yeah, that's fine. It's that's real. So it's good that we've actually done that. So to another way to do what you just did is put your mouse um, on the uh, numbering uh, scale on the left side of the graph. Okay. And your mouse. Yeah, when you, and and do a right mouse click, and then select auto scale X Y to fit. Oh, okay. And then that will, you you don't see it, but if you would have been. If um, I mess off, it up like that yeah, and I hit yeah, this, okay. boom. Okay, got it. Comes back. That's another way. Yeah. So is this um, the number one you wanted? I did, right. So do okay. a right mouse click on that and pick find max min. Okay, there we go. What it does is it is it brings um, like earmarks a box up, it earmarks it, right? And you can move those around and you can um, delete them if you want to. So if you put your mouse on that one and do a right mouse click, you have edit, Ooh. move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like and you it. can edit it. You can do edit and you can type in um, more information there if you wanted to. It's, you know, free form text. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I and like so, it. so then, so then the the thing would be okay. I want this to be one of my pages in my report. That makes so sense. So the way to make so way to make that happen is you go up to the top right hand corner of the program and look for add bookmark and you click on that. And then that cat copies this screen and puts it into another part of the software program. Okay, love it. So then, so then um, you might I, go to another phase and do the same thing. Yeah, I just duplicate exactly what we just did. Exactly. Okay. And then just click add bookmark. So obviously once you know what you're doing, you're not getting instructions. It, it can go relatively quickly. It looks like. Yes. Um, did I, I thought, oh, I uh, probably just did two bookmarks. Sorry. And see, boom, boom and add bookmark. And then uh, the other part of it, that was for voltage, which is fine, but then doing amperage is the other, uh, that we have to turn the volts off first. Oops. So go back to volts and turn the phase off. So now this is just a phase amperage, you know, load steady basically for that phase. Find the max, mark it. Well, I appreciate this, Jim, because, you know, at least it's not the blind leading the blind. Somebody's got eyes today. Right, yeah. I, I've got to the point where I've just memorized this uh, stuff because it just it's a daily task for me. This is what people want. Um, okay. So now I've got all three phases, voltage and current, min, max, marked with the graph that will yeah. show up in our report later when we make our report. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with segueing to that right now because um, this is what we just did, three phases for volts, three phases for amps. Um, that's a clean, easy report. That you can do much, much more. Now, but, what is some, but most people, when they're asking for a load study, this in a report will be good enough. Exactly. Because they're going to have their current for all three phases, and they'll know when the max was, and they'll kind of see what it looked like. 
Yeah. And then that's the point is, you know, load steady is okay. I have a system and I want to add something else to the, to this, to the building, you know, I'm going to add another motor or air conditioning or whatever. And okay. so they just want to make sure that the load doesn't, there's enough room. I think the, so, so we did bookmark these and then mm -hmm. you were trying to segue and I cut you off, but, uh, you, you want to show us the report. I assume. Yeah. Click. There's a here? report. There's a report tab right there. Yeah. Go okay. ahead and click on that. And uh, so, and then we've got all this here. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So there, there's the first two items under the project manager. Um, yeah. If, to get them into the report, you have two ways of doing it. You can click and drag like Brandon did, or you can just simply do a right mouse click on it on the left. If you go on. Yeah. And then hi highlight it and do a right mouse click on it. Okay. So you can add a report that yeah. way. Okay. So this kind of gives you an overview of how yep. you were set up. If you want that. Yeah. Yeah, and I noticed on the summary one, if you bring that over, because right now we're that's, There's that information in is blank, right? So we could have in the project manager added client information, the location, and the description, okay. um, if if we wanted to. So if you go back to the project manager, yeah, you can oh, click on the type. fields and type in whatever you want. And then there's also down in the lower uh, left hand area, there's a description and notes that you can freeform uh, typing as well if you needed to. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And description here, I guess. Both of those. Yep. Okay. So we go back to report now. Oh, so, yep. Yeah. It's it's in there. It's already done. Yeah. Even though I went back and edited it. Okay. Very nice. Right. And now I and assume I just keep pulling these over. Just, just keep pulling them over. Yep. Now, they look like they're all the same. Do is there a label? I guess they would just look in here. There's no. Is there a way to change this? You, you can rename them. Yes, okay. if you wanted to. So you um, could say volts phase A, right? Right. If you wanted to. I won't do it for all of them, but then then you have that. Okay. Uh, Enter. Okay, that's what I, and then you can minimize it. And then, so you could label all of these or you can have them. Now, you minimize them and you maximize them. If they're all minimized and I hit export, does it maximize them in the report itself? It does, yeah. That's a good segue though. Um, you, you mentioned uh, above the uh, black uh, tab where it says report, the very top there, uh -huh. there's some blue text now that appeared called export report. I see that. You see that. Right, right, right. So that was grayed out until we started dragging things into um, the body of the reporting area. Okay. Um, so it's, it says export report, but really what it means is generate a report. Like I want to um, have a, a file that I can share with somebody. Uh, so what I do, um, go ahead and cancel that, Brandon. I wanted to show um, something else. Okay. So the default of the program is going to have the export report go right to a JPEG. Okay. No, a P PDF, excuse me. No, that's not right. It's a, 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 da a dot .pdf. And I prefer doing what's called open preview. So I change the default. And the way that you do that is you go up to settings up in the top and then select the report output format. And then you'll see there's a checkbox next to PDF, but I click open preview. Yep. So when you do that. So I clicked open preview, got mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So now that's going to be the default and the program will keep that forever unless you change it. So now when you click the export report, it opens up a preview of what the report looks like so that you can decide that, yeah, this is really what I wanted. This looks good. I'm happy. Then you can create a PDF file by clicking up in the top left hand corner, the Adobe uh, symbol. It's a red looking okay. triangle symbol. Now, and it looks like it included some things that I don't think we originally put in there. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it, this, this is the, so the um, events. It, it included an event page and mm -hmm. different things. I don't think we had included that. So, but okay. I like that. And then this gets down to the stuff that we actually added, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. I see that. Oh, and that's nice. These little notes aren't just in there. They end up down here for easier reading. Yep. And you can see what you're checked here and whatnot. And I would probably recommend you relabel these. That way it's easier for 
a customer figure that out, right? I like that. Okay, so you, you, you preview it, you like it, then you click export at this point? Um, you can do that or just click on the Adobe. If it's a PDF that you want, then clicking there is fine. But if you do the other one, the export, there's uh, different choices. Oh, okay. So there's all the different options. You could click PDF or you can click yep. this and it'll just do the PDF. And then it brings up, it brings uh, up a screen. screen. To, yep. And the defaults are fine. I've never had anybody change any of those. So I just say, okay. Okay. And then it gives you a chance to name it and save it where you want that PDF file to be um, saved to. Now, now able to open it in Adobe and yep. uh, make that happen. So there we go. Yeah. So it's that that's as as mainstream clean as I can possibly think for you know a general public inquiry yeah I, but, I love it so um one thing i don't think we mentioned is there are other methods to get your readings off of uh off of your device you can yeah obviously use a usb stick but then you can use a usb cable and connect to your computer or if it has wi-fi you can use wi-fi and connect to your computer um, I think what Jim's advice and uh, my experience has been the easiest way is using a USB stick. That's what I would do. Um, but you can do whatever method you prefer. Right. Yeah. So the USB cable, it's just like what you'd expect. You have the meter, you have a USB cable, you plug it into the USB port in your PC. Um, ideally, the driver will install automatically. I've had a, a number of people where that doesn't always happen. Um, so I can, I typically just send the driver to them, just makes it quicker from okay. a tech support perspective. Um, but yeah, once that's done, then you go to download data, you know, like it shows up in there at the top of the program yep. and, and then it's going to want to, um, it's going to find it. So that's why it says the location at the top of this window talks about where it's going to be saved, which you can change. Yep. But, but the source was the other thing in that window, and that's where the USB um, yep. device would show up. Got it. So it, and then if it was the uh, Wi-Fi, which is the other uh, choice that you can do, um, we don't mean a network Wi-Fi. We just simply mean using Wi-Fi technology. So it would be, I, call, I use the term peer-to-peer. Yeah. So the uh, meter to, uh, let's say, a laptop that has Wi-Fi, that's what we would be doing. That so, makes total sense. Yeah, that makes – that. this is great. Um, I think that this is really beneficial, just the basic – obviously, there's more things you can do with Fluke Energy Analyze than we had time to go over today. But, um, Jim, now, you and your team, if, if somebody – you're based in the U.S., I believe. So if somebody in the U.S. wanted to call and actually talk to somebody and they're getting caught up on something, who would they reach out to? Where would they find you guys? Yeah, so we're out here in the uh, Fluke corporate area in Everett, Washington. So uh, we're on the West Coast. And our business hours for tech support is uh, 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. And the uh, telephone number directly to our team. You don't have to go through any, you know, of those things where you get transferred a half dozen times. Just to roll right into tech support, the direct number is uh, email um, is another way to go. Um, and Brendan, if you wanted to, um, on our website, if you want to show uh, how to do that, um, if you can bring up our sure. website in the background, go uh, to support there at the top and then pick technical support. And then there's the phone number I just gave you. But if you wanted to submit a support request, that's that's sending an email is what that means. So you click on that. Okay. And then you get put your email and put your information about your description, like what's my problem, you know, what's the issue. Got it, got it. Okay, so there's a and couple that, ways to get a hold of you guys. Yeah, and as long as we're here, I didn't think about this for the subject matter, but there's a knowledge base link there too. And so if you click on that, um, then select the industrial item, the flute. Yeah, click on that. Then we have some different categories. So as long as we're talking about 
power quality slide down until you see the power quality um, tools. Yeah, so if you click on the all the articles there, okay. see all 50 articles. There's one about um, energy, creating a report with Energy Analyze Plus. You see it's the it, right above that one. Oh, right here. Right there, yeah. Go ahead and click on that. And this is a, another video uh, that we've created um, that goes into way more details than what you, Brent, you and I did. So that's another idea for, for customers to okay. – and there's a whole bunch of other – items in there that uh, tech support has created for common questions that we get. Um, That's perfect. Well, Jim, I think that brings us to a close today. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if this is beneficial for you guys, let us know below and we'll have, have Jim on another time if there's another topic that he can add a lot of value for us. So thanks, Jim, and uh, take care, everyone. All right.